Hi there, my name is Derek McLaughlin and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biochemistry and I'm also currently the undergraduate chair of Biochem. And there's a photo of me right there so you have a sense of who's talking to you. Now I've been asked to say a few words about how you can obtain a research position as an undergraduate student. So there's actually quite a few ways you can go about this. Uh, the most obvious one to me is to take an honor specialization module that requires a fourth year thesis course. And this is a good way to get a research experience on an independent research project of your own uh, as a part of your degree. But not everyone can or wants to go this route. And so let's look at a few other ways you can go about this. Uh, you can volunteer. So that usually involves directly contacting a faculty member uh, and looking to see if they are willing to take you on as a volunteer in their lab. And I'll talk more about how you can go about this a little later. Uh, work study. There are sometimes uh, work study positions posted uh, through the Western Work Study Program uh, for students to get involved in lab work. I'm not saying this is very common, but this has happened and, and you can find this. Of course, you have to be eligible for work study uh, to access those jobs. Uh, a summer student. Many students will work uh, on a research project over the summer and uh, you can volunteer to do this but you might like to be paid and, and you may be able to arrange a, a paid internship or a paid uh, position some, as a summer student uh, paid by your supervisor but uh, it's better if you can somehow get uh, funding of your own uh, through a scholarship program like NSERC or other granting agencies might offer. Uh, science internship program is a wonderful way to get research experience or, or practical job experience and that's through uh, the Faculty of Science. Uh, it's usually after a student's third year you will take a, a year away from school uh, and do an 8 or a 12 or 16 month work placement and that can give you some very good solid practical uh, experience uh, in often in an, uh, a lab in industry or, or the business world. Uh, departments or faculties might have their own specific programs so if you're in a particular uh, department or program you might want to look to see what that department offers uh, as, as far as research opportunities uh, that are specific to that department. So I can't speak to all departments, I'll say a few words about biochem shortly. And then there are external opportunities and these might be more abundant than you might realize. Uh, I've given a couple examples here. Uh, the Sick Kids Summer Research Program, uh, as its name suggests, uh, provides funding for uh, undergrads to work uh, over the summer at Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. Uh, the Dad Rise Program, you can take a look at that. That's actually an, uh, a program offered by the government of Germany to uh, allow students from other countries including Canada to travel to Germany to do a research internship uh, in Germany uh, and you know that's just a couple examples uh, but I would say Google it and, and see what you can uh, you can find. So as I mentioned before, I am in the biochemistry department, so I thought I'd just give an overview of the types of things you can look into if you want to get involved in research in our department. So really the great place to look is our department website where you'll find a listing of all the research interests of the different faculty members. Uh, and so you might find something of interest uh, there, someone doing research you might find appealing. Now the biochemistry department, like all uh, basic science departments in the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry uh, is eligible to participate in the Dean's Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program or DURAP and the application process for this is usually open in January of every year and due sometime in February so check that out. This is a program designed to give students funding to do research over the summer in a lab within the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry and you will find biochem projects there among uh, other departments. Uh, so that's one way to get a summer, uh, summer student position. Uh, if you're interested in research in biochem, you might consider taking one of these courses. Biochem 3383 is called Introduction to Biochem Research. This is an optional course in most of our modules, so it's not required. Uh, and students uh, have to be taking 3381 and 3382 courses, the biochem courses, uh, in order to be eligible for this. 
but here you, you get into a lab and you do uh, research on a project of your own, about five hours of research time a week, uh, and you write up a report at the end, and there's a few other uh, parts of that course. Uh, but that's a great way to get into a lab and to get exposure to research. Uh, the key thing there, though, is you do need to take the initiative to go and work out a project with a faculty member yourself. So you, in order to be registered in the course, you have to have arranged a project uh, ahead of time. Uh, so the, but that, the onus is on the students then to go and find those projects, and that's why looking at the research interests of our faculty members might be helpful. Uh, and so a lot of students, or many students, will take that course uh, with the view to staying in the same lab to do their Biochem 4483 project. And 4483 is our fourth year thesis project that's required in our honor specialization modules. And that is offered, of course, from September to April every year. But you, we also in Biochem offer this course over the summer from May to August. And so here's the thing, uh, in order to take this course in September to April, you do have to be registered in year four of an honor specialization module that requires the course because we have a limited number of projects available and so we can't just accept uh, everybody, we, we, we limit it to students in our honor specialization modules. However, the, the summer version of the course uh, doesn't have that restriction because normally we don't have as many students wanting to take it in the summer so we have more space for students and uh, as long as you've taken the core third year biochem courses and by that I mean biochem 3381, 3382 and 3380 you are eligible to take biochem 4483E in the summer even if you're in say a major module. Okay, so again, like for the 3383, to take the summer 4483, you have to make arrangements with the supervisor ahead of time. But if you do the 4483 in the summer, you are eligible to take Biochem 4999, which is advanced research in biochem, uh, and that is offered for, from September to April. And there you just continue work or do additional work on a research project. And the interesting thing here is that uh, research done in this course, 49.99, is eligible to be counted toward a graduate program if you uh, continue on uh, into our graduate program in biochemistry, to the master's program. So that's the so-called accelerated master's option. Uh, so just a few options in biochem, mainly course related. Uh, other departments may have other programs. So you should really check out the department of interest uh, that you have uh, and uh, see what they offer in terms of research opportunities. So on this slide, I'm trying to give my best advice about how to approach a potential research supervisor. Things you should do, things you should not do. So first of all, you want to think about why it is exactly that you want to work in a lab. Like what, what are you looking for here? Uh, so it's good to understand your goals or what you're trying to get out of the experience so you know how to uh, look for the experience you want to get. Um, you should read up on the principal investigators research uh, before you approach them. Uh, don't talk to a, a researcher without having looked up a little bit about their research. Now it doesn't mean you have to be an expert on the research or, or know everything about it, but you should have a general sense of what goes on in the lab so you can maybe ask uh, some intelligent questions uh, or uh, at least be able to converse uh, appropriately about what's happening in, this, in the researcher's lab. Um, you want, if you're sending an email, and it's perfectly fine to just send a, an email just out of the blue to a professor just to ask to see if they have any uh, positions in their lab. When you do that, though, uh, you want to tailor your email to the researcher. So it appears that you are specifically interested in that researcher, which hopefully you actually are. Um, so that's where reading up on the principal investigator's research can uh, help you write a decent letter or email. You might ask questions or, or say, you know, I saw you wrote a paper about this. I found that very interesting. Um, I'd like to talk to you more about that. Uh, don't send a form email where that, that, you know, it could be sent to just anybody. Uh, that is going to probably turn the, the researcher off a little bit because it looks like you're just looking for any old research position and you're not that particularly interested in their research. And that doesn't create a great impression. So that leads right into the next point. You should be interested in the work that you're uh, asking to do. 
uh, you should not seem like you don't really care about that work specifically and you're just looking for something to look good on your CV or your resume. Okay, so that's where the intrinsic interest really uh, pays off uh, and you should be looking for research that uh, actually sparks your interest uh, on, on a sort of internal level. Uh, and generally it's it's possible for researchers to pick up on the fact whether you're actually interested in the work or you're just looking for any old research position. Uh, generally speaking, you always want to uh, uh, do what you say you were going to do. Um, so if you could say you're going to show up at a certain time, uh, be there at that time. If you say you're going to send them some information, well, you better follow up and send that information because it makes a bad impression if you say, oh, yes, I'll do this, and then you don't actually follow through. Uh, telling the truth uh, is important. Honesty is always the best policy. Uh, and so this is where, um, you know, you have to be honest about why you want to work in a lab and you should be honest with the supervisor. So uh, an example would be uh, if the supervisor asks you, uh, are you planning to go to medical school? What, what are your future plans? Uh, if you wanted to go to medical school, you should be honest about that. Um, and, and that's fine. They're, they're not necessarily going to hold that against you. Um, so don't try to pretend though that you're like oh yes ever since i was four years old i've wanted to be a phd and, and do phd research when that's not really true uh because then sooner or later the truth tends to come out and then that might make you uh, look bad so i you know if, if you're looking for just a summer position and you don't want to do a fourth year project you know it's okay to say that i think you should you don't want to mislead and make them think that you're in there say for a, a long-term project when you really want to only be there for the summer and uh, you should always be diligent to, and take responsibility for things uh, that's uh, you know uh, just sort of a given anytime you're looking for any sort of work or, or responsible position you want to be known as a person who takes responsibility Okay, so what are research supervisors looking for in a trainee? I tried to put the major things on this list. And we'll start with intrinsic motivation or interest. And this is probably the most, single most important thing that researchers are looking for in their trainees. Someone who has an internal drive to get things done, an internal curiosity, an internal interest and motivation in the research that they're doing. Uh, because that is something it's, you can't really teach someone um, and if you don't have that intrinsic motivation it makes it harder for you to persevere through problems or to do the more tedious aspects of research and there are tedious aspects to research so really when you are approaching a, a faculty member you should really and hopefully this is authentic you should really try to convey uh, an motivation to say look I'm really interested in this and I, I can't wait to get in the lab and start working on this stuff uh, if you don't have that, then I'd, a I'd ask you why you're looking for a, a research position in the first place, okay? Because that, that motivation really is, is a very important part of success. Uh, you want to be someone who takes initiative and someone who takes responsibility. So taking initiative, what I mean by that is, well, if you see a problem, try to solve it or try to fix it. If you see something that could make the lab better, go ahead and do that. Uh, someone who takes responsibility if you see uh, if you cause a problem in the lab and it comes to light that, that what something you did was problematic take responsibility for that uh, but also take responsibility for your own work so if if you are given a set of experiments to do no no one's going to do them for you you have to take responsibility for that and plan out your day plan out your week when am I going to fit this in amongst my classes or my other obligations uh, and it's up to you to make that work. Um, if you're doing an experiment, you have to do your utmost to make that experiment work. Don't blame someone else because they gave you uh, bad reagents or they gave you bad instructions. Uh, you take responsibility for making it work and, and don't look to blame other people. Uh, having a good work ethic is great uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes research is tedious work and, and you have to put in some long hours sometimes. And if you are able to do that with, you know, without complaining, uh, with keeping a positive attitude, that's that's really good. Uh, reliability and honesty, these are things that anyone would want in any employee, someone who does what they're supposed to do and is honest about what they're doing and, and what's going on. So that should be a, a, a given. Uh, 
Uh, thoughtfulness, what do I mean by that? Well, you should be present while you're working in the lab and aware of what's happening and what you're doing. Don't go on autopilot. Uh, you, want, you want someone working for you who is always thinking about what's happening uh, and their brain is engaged uh, so that when things go wrong or when something doesn't seem quite right, they can notice that and uh, make adjustments or ask for help if needed. Uh, intelligence, well, this is on the list, uh, but you don't have to be some sort of Einstein super genius to be successful in research or to be a, a good research trainee. Uh, obviously, being smart will help, uh, but you know, if you don't have to be, uh, you know, super brilliant. Okay, so uh, it's on the list, but it's not high on the list. Um, so th that is what it is. I mean, so if your marks are mediocre. That's fine. I mean, I, I would say go for it uh, because that's not usually the top thing on most uh, supervisors list. Uh, they, they won't uh, exclude you usually for, for that reason. Um, if you seem motivated and reliable and take responsibility and all the other stuff. Uh, and I put social skills and emotional intelligence down because this is important. You're generally working in a lab with other people. And so it's good to be able to get along with those other people. And so you have to be able to fit into the lab, um, know the sort of the social rules of the lab and that sort of thing. You can sort of feel your way through that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it can be uncomfortable if, if people don't get along in the lab. So you have to do your best to get along and so they're going to be looking for someone who can fit in with their lab and work productively in a team uh, with other people. Okay, so that's the basics of, of looking for research positions uh, as an undergraduate. I hope that you're able to find something suitable. I wish everybody all the best of success in your research experiences. And uh, I think that the organizers of this whole uh, thing are going to have a mechanism by which you can ask questions. So I look forward to engaging with you more on questions that you have about the whole process. So thanks for listening.